The following podcast is brought to you by Pro Wrestling Connect, Australia's newest choice for event management and brand development specialising in pro wrestling. And now, now the B Plus Wrestling Podcast. Podcast. Watch global. global. Support local. local. It's the B Plus Wrestling Podcast. Podcast. You might not be an A, but you are a B Plus. Check it out! Here we go! All right, ladies, gents, and non binary friends, welcome to another B Plus podcast. I'm your host, Greg Unchained. Today is Friday. You know what that means. It's our favorite day here on the B Plus podcast. It is Aussie Graps Friday. We sit down and talk everything Australian professional wrestling, including a chat with an Aussie grappler or grappler adjacent person. This time around, I had the chance to speak with Izzy Shaw, uh, Adelaide's sweetheart, now a member of the, the Claw. Not sure what's going on there. She likes things dark, I guess. So she's she's gone dark and she's joined the claw. We'll talk we'll talk to her about that in a moment. But first, let's take a look at what's happening this week in Aussie Graps News. Once again, guys, uh, I'm just going to let you guys know I may have missed a few things this week. I'm uh, you know dealing with uh, my mental health issues. I've been kind of withdrawn. I've done a lot of uh, self care. You know, done a lot of. Uh, getting out and, and doing things that I wouldn't normally do and sort of getting away from uh, the little work box that I put myself in a lot of the times when I'm, you know, doing my uni work and then watching wrestling and then writing notes and then doing uni work and then watching wrestling and writing notes. And so I've sort of taken myself out of that routine and, and allowed myself to get out and, and try to be social and do other things and just try to be different. Uh, so, you know, some of the stuff that has sort of just sort of gone straight past, uh, including some stuff from last week, which I want to correct myself on, uh, Aussies overseas, the four nations are heading back to King of Trios. They almost won it last year. They almost won it. And uh, they're going back. So uh, big congratulations to the four nations for heading back over to Chikara for the King of Trios. I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Uh, but looking a little bit more locally in the news, uh, Sub-Zero Pro announced an open weight title match. So we knew Takashita was coming over, the ace of DDT. We knew he was coming over to uh, do a match in Sub-Zero Pro. Apparently that match is going to be with Chris Basso with the winner winning the open weight title for Sub-Zero Pro. Now, at the last show when they were Iron Fist Pro, they advertised a tag team title match. No belts ever came. Uh, One of the teams didn't come and it just became a completely different show altogether. Uh, Still an amazing show. Don't get me wrong, still an amazing show, but one of the teams that was meant to be there competing for the titles weren't there and the titles that were supposed to be competed for weren't there. So, whether this actually ends up being Basso versus Takashita for a Sub-Zero open weight title, I do not know, but that is what's on the card. So that's what we're expecting to see. And uh, if that's what happens, it's going to be amazing. Chris Basso is super underrated. One of the best in the world. Uh, absolutely world-class, pun intended, because that's his name. Uh, definitely, if you're in Adelaide, this is one to check out as long as it actually goes down the way it is advertised. Over in Melbourne, big congratulations to Slex, MCW World Champion Slex, on the birth of his baby with his partner. Of course, congratulations to the entire family on the new edition. And speaking of new additions, we found out that the Ballroom Brawl is going to feature an appearance by TK Cooper. Coming down to Australia, he's got some loose ends to tie up. So TK Cooper is coming to Melbourne City Wrestling, possibly even coming for Slex's title. Who knows? If he's in that Ballroom Brawl... He could, he could have a one-way ticket to, to number one contendership. So definitely interesting. Now, the, the bulk of what I want to talk about, this is going to be a short episode, guys, uh, just because of you know the, the amount of news and what have you, and, and just uh, as I mentioned previously. But I do want to have a bit of a rant here, if you'll allow me. This is, uh, you know, we have a, a PWA preview show coming up. So if you want more in-depth discussion on a bunch of things, listen to the PWA preview show that I'm going to do with Big Boy Mikey. But I want to take this time just to rant. I don't do it often. Actually, it's kind of all I do. It's kind of all I do on this podcast is rant. But this is a real a real proper focused in rant because mainstream media is starting to pay attention to Australian professional wrestling. And man, it is a double-edged blade because it is so good. We want as many eyes on the product as possible because for the most part, the product that is Australian professional wrestling is solid as shit right now. 
sort of shit. I mean, you know, if you're constipated, I guess. That's a weird analogy. It's really, really solid at the moment. The the product that is Australian professional wrestling, there are so many world-class, I'll say it again, there are so many world-class, just absolutely incredible wrestlers in our country putting on incredible matches for incredible companies uh, with an incredibly polished, I'm saying incredible a lot, with an amazingly polished product uh, that gets put onto our TVs via the internet, via whatever avenues you can stream these things. Ovo Play, Pivot Share, etc. cetera. Uh, Vimeo is a big one for us here. And people are starting to pay attention. We've seen it. We've talked about it a lot, right? There was a, a you know, interviews in the brag. There's, you know, interviews, the papers pick it up. And there's, uh, it's been, we've been on TV a lot lately. We've been on the project. We've been on uh, all sorts of things. Uh, SBS Viceland did a really good one on PWA with Jessica Troy and Jack Bonza in it. Uh, this week, we had a couple of others. Uh, the Phillip Brothers uh, promoting their New Japan appearance because the New Japan card has come out and the Phillip Brothers are, are, are Philippe Brothers. I always say it wrong. The Philippe Brothers are, are due to have a match on a New Japan show here in Australia. And so they were promoting that on ABC. Uh, we also had AWF do a segment with the footy show this week. We know that AWE up in Sydney, a company we don't talk about a lot, but AWE, they had a comedian come in and do something. I don't think that one's seen airtime yet because we haven't watched it. But uh, there's also, of course, as, as I mentioned, you know, the Triple M guys are doing lots of coverage of wrestling. Uh, and the, the footy show had AWF on this week. And Studio 10, the morning show on Channel 10, had PWA New Japan guys on. There's a lot. There's a lot. A lot of mainstream coverage uh, coming for Australian professional wrestling. and. Uh, it's good but bad. Let's talk about. Let's let's start with AWF, right? AWF did a segment on the Footy Show, and this was this was just awful, in my opinion. I mean, it's it's one of those things where there's different flavors of wrestling, right? And there's different things for everybody. And I'm sure somebody out there enjoyed this. I'm sure somebody out there thought this was good. But I got to question the thinking behind it. I got a question the thinking behind it because you got you look at Maddie Johns and I think it's Maddie Johns. I don't know their fucking names. I don't watch sport. I don't care about these people. I am so far removed from Australian mainstream culture, and I know that's gonna that, like that's not gonna endear me to a lot of you. A lot of you people listening to this are very much you know into your Australian culture, and, I, and, and that's fine. Australian culture. What's Australian culture? Meat pies, mate. I don't know. I'm I'm so far removed from mainstream Australian culture that it's not even funny when people talk about you know sports stars, NRL, you know, even our rock stars or people that, you know, do TV shows and stuff here. Like, I don't, I don't know who the judges are on The Voice in Australia. I don't even, I didn't even know that the Channel 10 morning show was studio. I thought it was, isn't that Sunrise? What's Sunrise? Is that Channel 7? I, Channel 9? I don't fucking know. I don't care about this stuff because mainstream media and mainstream culture is dog shit, in my opinion, Right. A lot of the stuff these people talk about is just low IQ nonsense, right? It's just it's just the lowest common denominator crap. And that's what you get when you tune into the fucking footy show, right? It's just low and co- lowest common denominator crap. And they don't know fucking shit about wrestling, man. And the people who are wrestlers that are involved in this, they should know better. They should know better because you should go in and you should say, no, look, okay, I understand you've got this hokey 80s view of wrestling and that's what you want to make your jokes but we can make jokes without disrespecting what is wrestling now right but instead tnt sitting there doing his Whoa, sa, sa, and like he's he's being more animated than normal and i love tnt i love tnt right i think he's an amazing character he didn't need to amp it up even more like i'm, I'm wondering if the producers sat there and were like TNT, we need you to be more animated, more. Because surely TNT's got to sit there and be like, I'm pretty fucking animated already, man. I don't need to be more animated, right? And you got Misfit licking the belt. Misfit licking the belt was actually pretty cool. I, I did enjoy that. I popped for that. I thought that was fun. Uh, and uh, Daisy was fine as well. Like, it, it's not about the wrestlers necessarily as much as it is just about the portrayal. And letting the footy show guys get in the ring and put on their stupid little splash bull crap and showing the crowd, like letting them show, letting the footy show people film the crowd. There were like 12 people in attendance at this show. I don't know where this show was. 
Uh, it didn't look like one of the regular AWF venues. It definitely wasn't at the mothership in Marrickville where they tend to pack it out, but it, it just, it looked awful. It looked awful. These, uh, you know, there's, there's 12 people in the crowd who have 15 teeth between them. And they, I, I know I'm, I'm dissing on, on my people here. I'm dissing on wrestling fans. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this, but that is not what we want people seeing on the on the footy show on their mainstream TV we want them to take this seriously this the sport of Australian professional wrestling is so good right now and then you get to studio 10 and studio 10 okay the the uh I felt like uh, the PWA guys and 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 Tox Farley did a really good job for their part in this right so you had uh Mick Moretti he was just being Mick Moretti you had Robbie Eagles he was just being Robbie Eagles you had uh Tox Farley I feel like uh, they they had Farley turn himself up and make himself a bit more of a cartoony character a bit more eighties, but it was just the one. And then you had, you still had uh Bonza just being Bonza. And Bonza was fantastic in this. Like, especially when the host started doing his stupid host shit, you could tell Bonza was not impressed. Right. And I'm like, I don't know if that was Bonza, the character, or if that was Bonza, the man behind the character who was just like, what the fuck did we sign up for here? I don't know. I have no idea, but, I, I, but that's the thing with Bonza's character, right? He can do that and he can, he can, he can react in that way. But the host, whoever this, idiot was and this is what i mean when i say i don't know anything about mainstream culture people online in the comments are saying the guy's name and oh this person this that person and i'm like i don't know who these people are i have no idea and i don't care what i do know is they know nothing about wrestling if anything i mean he referenced mario milano and stuff so he's like thinking of stuff from way way back and and they just they present it like it's a joke and this guy was standing in that ring right and the, the ring is sacred right? Like, you know, everyone knows that wrestling fan. A lot of you listening to this are that wrestling fan who, when you first went to a live wrestling show, you touched the apron. You touched the apron and you were just like, oh man, like that is glorious. And a lot of us, a lot of us touched that apron and were like, I need to get in that ring one day, right? And it's that, that mat is sacred to take a line from a famous wrestling stable in the world. It, and to have the host of this show, I, Jono was his name Jono I don't know but he gets in there and he's just asking stupid questions and he just looks like an idiot and, and they don't know anything about professional wrestling he was standing there with some of the best athletes in this country not best wrestlers best athletes in this country and when they actually did their thing and they did their moves and they they had their little showcase you could hear the people in the studio being like oh oh these guys are actually Oh, that looks like it hurt. That actually looks good. What are they? Right? You didn't get that with the AWF one, unfortunately, because you had the footy show people in there freaking wrestling, and it looked ridiculous. Just like when this host threw a clothesline at some of the young boys, it looked ridiculous. It's uh, mainstream media. I don't know. I don't know how much of it we need, to be honest with you. I think that we're moving into an era where everything is becoming more niche, right? And the mainstream outlets are losing their power anyway. And I get that it's going to get more eyes, but something a little less mainstream, like the SBS Viceland, it's not going to have as many viewers as Studio 10, okay? But the people watching Studio 10, they do not give a shit. And that's the thing too with the Studio 10 one. At least it actually advertised something. They did get the plug-in for, P they mentioned PWA multiple times. They got the, they got the plug-in for New Japan Pro Wrestling Southern Showdown. Robbie mentioned the dates and where the shows were, but the host starts challenging people to fights and just being an idiot. And it just, it just bums me out because it's so low IQ. Like they don't have a clue about wrestling and it feeds them the main culture into this. If you have ever had a debate with someone about whether it's something political, whether it's something business, whether it's something you do for work, whatever it is. And you've had a debate with someone who clearly does, it may have been wrestling. You have a debate with someone who clearly knows nothing about what they're talking about. And they will rattle off their strongest possible opinion. And they'll be like, but that's just, that's just my opinion, man. That's just my opinion, right? It is uninformed journalists, quote unquote journalists. And I know they're not journalists. I know they're just talking heads on a TV. I know they're just faux celebrities that are put there. But they're put there in a manner that they look like and act like reporters, right? And so they're in there pretending this is some kind of news, yeah? And they're presenting this shit and they don't know what they're talking about right? And that feeds out into the culture where now if, if people can go on TV and not know what the fuck they're talking about, 
I can not know what the fuck I'm talking about and be an idiot with an opinion, and that's my right. No, you don't have a right to talk about wrestling if you don't know what the fuck wrestling is, right? And hats off to the PWA guys who were on the Studio 10 thing because they did a good job. It was literally just the the presenter guy and the people back in the studio that were that were idiots there. The AWF one, I don't know where that went off the rails, but it was, in my opinion, it was trash. I was not a fan. It, it made the whole thing look like a joke. This is not the 80s, okay? Wrestling is not whatever that was anymore. Wrestling is PWA Green Label. Wrestling is... Melbourne City Wrestling, like the, the 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 quality of shows that we are putting on at the moment is fucking insane. And if you just put that out there, if you just put that out there and just show, look at how good our athletes are. People will come. People are coming, right? And this Studio 10 footy show bullshit, it doesn't help. It, it really makes it look like a joke. You know what is going to help though? You know what is going to help? And this is my favorite news item of the day. And I'm saving this for last because this is positive and this is the B plus podcast. This is where we be positive. That is what we do here. And so I, I feel horrible having gone on this 10 minute fucking rant about mainstream fucking media and how shit they present wrestling and how they make it look like a goddamn joke. So I'm just going to take a quick second to collect my thoughts and, uh, and come back with some positive news. Just, just give me one second. Trying to see what up though, Brooklyn, home of the cut though, notorious, y'all know how the rest go sleep, one eye open, too smart cause I'm always scoping, watching, seeing how these lames look, lazy, this how you get your frame to money. I got money, the theme song of Matty Wahlberg, he is going on a survivor, Australian survivor, the news broke this morning as I record this, it's late Thursday night, it broke Thursday morning. This is where Matty Wahlberg's been. Last week, I wondered, where has Matty Wahlberg been? Is he in Caveman Ugg's cave? It seems like he's been socially isolated from us with social media. He's been completely silent. It's because he was on a fucking island surviving. And this is something. This is the kind of mainstream attention we need for professional wrestling. Because here's the thing. He's going to go in there as the Australian professional wrestler and teacher, by the way. He's a teacher. His shoot job is he's a teacher. What the hell? What what is Matty Wahlberg teaching these kids? Anyway, he's in there and he's going to uh, be going in as the Australian professional wrestler. That's the label they're giving him. It's champions versus contenders, right? And so I assume what it is is they're having people who have won things, like you've got Olympic gold medalists and NRL legends, and then they're having contenders, which are like these amateur athletes. I, I, I assume this is what it looks like. Matty Wahlberg was heavily featured in the trailer, which came out this morning. It's fantastic. Go watch it. I'll put a link in the show notes. And so Matty Wahlberg is one of the contenders and he's like, man, it's our time. Like the promo he cuts in this little ad is fantastic. I can tell already that he is going to be a star on this show. I'm going to pop so big for this. I haven't watched Survivor since I was a child and I am going to be watching every fucking episode of this religiously to see how this plays out. Because here's the thing. He's going to go in as this Australian professional wrestler. He does the fake stuff. He does the fake stuff. He's going to be looked at as that joke. And he's going to take Australian professional wrestling and he's going to carry it on his fucking back. No pressure, Matty, by the way, if you're listening to this. No pressure. But I hope you take Australian professional wrestling. I hope you carry it on your back. And I hope you show people that you are just as good of an athlete as a fucking gold medalist. You are just as good of an athlete as an NRL legend. That is what our Australian wrestlers do. And you watch when he gets the talk shows after this. You watch them say, oh, you do that, the wrestling thing. We were surprised to see just, just how athletic you are. And he gets the chance to say, you got to be, man. you got to be that athletic to do what we do because we're going in there. We're throwing ourselves with high velocity at the ground. You have to have incredible neck strength. You have to have incredible conditioning to, to you know, get in that ring and run those ropes and run around and, and throw yourself at the ground for 15 minutes in a, in a main event match. You need to be a high caliber athlete. He's going to do wonders in mainstream media attention just by being on this show because he gets to show that he is a world-class athlete. Not a joke. Not a joke like they showed on the footy show. Not a joke like that idiot on Studio 10. He gets to show that Australian wrestlers are world-class athletes. 
And that's the kind of mainstream media attention we need. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing Matty Warburg on Survivor. That does it with my rant about media coverage of Australian professional wrestling. We really need to pick up our game with how we get portrayed in the media because I do not like this thing that I love being portrayed as such a joke. But Matty Warburg, congratulations on Survivor. Looking forward to watching it. It's going to be amazing. We're going to have to talk soon. But this week, I had a chat with Izzy Shaw. So let's have a listen to that. Much more positive than my rant here. And then I'll hit you after the break with what's happening this weekend near you. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. Hey, everyone. Just want to take a second to tell you about one of our new sponsors, Outbreak Nutrition. Outbreak Nutrition are creating supplements for survival, sharper minds, quicker reflexes, all the energy you need to take your performance to the next level, whether that be on the field, in the gym, on the gaming field. That's right. They have specifically designed gaming supplements as well to help you focus on those late night sessions. They even sell coffee, you guys, at Outbreak Nutrition. You can get coffee pods. You can get coffee beans. You can get supplements for the bedroom as well if you want to enhance your performance there. These are performance enhancing supplements for every aspect of your life, specifically designed by gamers for gamers to stay fit and healthy in the gym, to stay sharp and focused on the game and to dominate in all areas of life. So check out OutbreakNutrition.com, and for being a listener of our podcast, they will give you 10% off your order when you enter the code B+. That is B-P-L-U-S at checkout. So make sure if you want to stay on top of your game, if you want to take your performance to the next level, OutbreakNutrition.com, enter the code B+, at checkout. Hey guys, just a reminder, if you want to hear all of these wonderful B-plus podcast episodes completely ad-free, make sure you head over to Patreon or Podbean, where we are the featured podcast this week. You can subscribe for as little as a dollar a month, up to $10 a month, where anything you want to help us with, it really helps out. It's going to help us grow the site. It's going to help us redesign some things. And everything that we get through this and through the advertising as well is all going straight back into the podcast so that we can get Aussie Graps out there for the rest of the world to hear about, for the rest of the world to see, so we can grow this mission of watch global, support local, and build indie wrestling. So if you want to be a part of that and get some really cool rewards like call-in shows, bonus episodes, ad-free like I mentioned, then head over to patreon.com slash the B plus and subscribe today. All right, joining me at this time, Adelaide's sweetheart of wrestling. Well, not so much anymore. I don't even know anymore. Izzy Shaw, how are you? Hello, I'm good. How are you? I'm I'm very good. I'm very good. Thank you. But I, I wanted to talk to you about uh, all the changes that you've been going through in the, the last year uh, over in Underworld and everything. But I figure we should probably, before we get into all that kind of craziness, we should start like right back at the beginning. Uh, and, and I like to ask people, you know, how did you get into wrestling? How did you become a fan? So the interesting thing is I became a wrestling fan because I wanted to impress a boy because there was a guy I liked who loved wrestling. So I wanted to watch wrestling to impress them and ended up falling in love with wrestling because I was watching it to impress him. Right. Fair enough. Yeah. See, I became a Christian (laughs) the same way. I feel like getting into wrestling is a way better religion than than getting into Christianity. But uh, that's yeah. So we talking like when you were were quite young or... Um, we're talking 10 years old. Okay. Wow. All right. Yeah. I was, I was, yeah, I'm, I was a strange child. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that scares me. My my daughter's getting older. I don't want her getting boy crazy that early. But so you decided to impress this boy with all your wrestling knowledge and then you ended up becoming a wrestler. Yep. yep. <laughs> what, I thought what wrestling was weird. He would always talk about wrestling. I'd be like, eh, right. This this wrestling stuff, okay, and then I watched it, and I went, "Whoa, this is why he likes it." <laughs> right, yeah, it's a pretty easy thing to get once you see it, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. So when did when did you make that that uh, shift in your mind where you're like, you know what, I think I want to actually go and throw myself hard at the ground uh, and try to do that as an actual hobby or a potential career? When I was about thirteen. So I was watching it for a few years. Just um, I would watch it every weekend, and I was about thirteen, maybe twelve, actually. I um was watching, uh, watching it at my grandparents' house, and my uncle um went into the room and he's like, "Are you even come a wrestler?" 
Izzy. And I was like, yeah, I'll become a wrestler. <laughs> that's, the earliest remem- that's the earliest memory I've got of just him walking in going, are you going to be a wrestler? And I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah, so when you were 13, you kind of had your mind made up, or you were at least toying with the idea. Yeah, yeah. And I remember always, because I didn't know there was wrestling in Australia. I yeah. just thought I had to go to America to wrestle. Yeah. And I remember always telling my parents and stuff, like, one day I'm going to fly over to America and I'm going to become a wrestler. Um, that was just always going to happen. I didn't care what anyone said. I'm like, I'm going to America and I'm going to be able to learn to become a wrestler. And that's what's going to happen. <laughs> Right. Awesome. And so were you like, were you like in the magazine? Because I know when I was a kid, I'd, I'd get like the magazines and stuff and they would have ads for like different American or UK wrestling schools and stuff. So I was always like, I'm going to go over there and, until eventually I found out there is wrestling in Australia. Was it a similar kind of thing with you or were you, you're you a bit younger than me, so you'd probably be more on the internet era of things. No, I didn't follow the magazines or um anything like that. The way I got into actually training and stuff was... A friend knew somebody from RCW. That's the first time I really clicked. Oh my God, there's wrestling in Australia. Right. (laughs) I I don't have to go to America to do it. (laughs) So yeah, it was a friend that knew somebody from RCW and they got me all the information and stuff. Right. And so you start, you see, you started training with Riot City. Yes, I did. Yeah. And how did, how did you find like, uh, you know, so what, how old were you when you started training? I started a week after my 15th birthday because you had to be 15 to train. Okay. So you were in there like yeah. as soon as they'd take you. Yeah. Yeah. That's so dedication. My friend told me about RCW about, I think, two months before my 15th birthday. And then once I found out that I had to be 15, it was just like, yep. Yeah, as soon as I turn 15, I'm becoming a wrestler. That's what's going to happen. So, yeah. That's awesome. And so so you started training there, and uh, so you started training at 15. That's crazy. And then, I mean, how long until you were sort of show ready? How long until you started actually performing? Uh, almost two years later. Right. So my birthday is in April, and I believe I, my my debut match was in march two years later wow okay so it's, it's a bit of a long road how how is the the training itself like as a as a teenage girl right i mean you know getting in there and throwing yourself at it like is it are there unique challenges there or with me my biggest challenge has always been i'm not like athletically gifted right it so that was my biggest challenge is that i it takes it took time to get everything where with other people, they got everything like quickly and faster than me. So it was a big challenge for me uh, with that stuff. And also I was the youngest person there. I'm pretty sure I was the only person from school for a long time. Right. Really small. (laughs) RCW. (laughs) Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm tiny. That doesn't help at all either. With RCW, it is training with them is it's very it's um demanding like physically. Yeah, I am. I think with them, they are very they they are very serious on what they do. Yeah, I mean, you can see you can see from looking at them, they're all like body guys and stuff too, and they've got like the full gym going on in there at the at the training facility. Yeah, yeah, they um. They've learned from some of the best and they've taught us the way that they've learned. Like they've, they've learned from some of the best. So they teach us from what they've learned from the best. I hope I'm making sense. Yeah, I'm no, sorry. That makes sense. That makes sense. So it's, it's a very, a very high caliber of training, which you can tell just by looking at the talent that comes out of the RCW Academy, that it's, it's very professional, very high caliber. And they do, they do take what they do seriously. Uh, they want people to be safe. I've spoken to Grim before, and you know he's like, you know, you want people to, you know, even if you're going to be a weekend warrior, you train yourself as if you're going to be the best athlete ever, because that's, you know, you you want to be safe in there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
no, I, I understand. So they they do have that very very serious about it attitude, and well, so like as a as a teenager, that's like, uh, you know, it's a lot to handle, I guess. Yeah, it is. It was quite daunting at the start. Yeah, to begin with. Yeah. But the other yeah. thing, the other thing I think I've noticed about Riot City Wrestling as well is that uh, uh, it it feels like a it's a poor choice of words, considering I'm I'm speaking to you know, so a, a brotherhood though, right? Like a family, it's like like a family vibe. That's a better word for it, a family vibe. Like uh, yeah. everyone there's ta- looking out for each other, taking care of each other, and all that sort of thing. Yes, yes, very much so. <laughs> yeah. So, but you, you said you were like the youngest and stuff. Was it hard to fit in, or is it like wrestling binds people together? It was a bit tricky for me. Um, I did have one girl that I was very close to and would spend a lot of time together while we're at training so I didn't feel less it was hard because I was the youngest so I did yeah I just felt different than everyone else but it did help um there was a lady called Aria Gracie she's only done a handful of matches she's not wrestling anymore but um she was the one I would always just go to (laughs) so I would feel less isolated Right. Um, it did get better though when other people my age came along. Like there was a guy that was there years ago named Ty Evans and he had a friend that was also training and of course Demi Bennett. When Demi Bennett came that helped a lot as well. Yeah. Um yeah. And we had a few other guys that eventually came along that were a bit younger. Yeah. Cause, cause I feel like yeah. wrestling, wrestling is a community vibe. And so having people, like, I know that when I, when I trained for a while in Sydney, um, just having people that you can bond with over this thing that makes us all, cause like, let's be honest, we're, we're wrestling fans. We're all fucking weird, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so having, yes. having that thing and being able to bond with a bunch of other weirdos and, and, uh, that, but it, then that said, even in, in like the classes, you did find people that were, were sort of, you know, still struggling to fit in so it's it, i i understand what you're talking about there but uh you, you mentioned there demi bennett obviously now known as Rhea ripley over in uh nxt uk or nxt i don't know wwe somewhere uh, the, the brands confuse me sometimes uh how was it like working with demi and and and, and training with demi because i actually saw you guys tag in uh, i want to say it was in Parramatta, like six years ago or something seven years ago yeah. i don't know how a long time ago yeah, that was long. That was like a year into us wrestling. Yeah. Um, yeah, you guys were babies, <laughs> essentially. Yes, we were. Yeah. We were babies. We used to be best friends. It's funny because we, um, Rhea, Rhea, when it came to me, I wasn't athletically gifted. I'm going to call her Demi because yeah, I know of her as Demi. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't athletically gifted and she was. Yeah. I remember her because she came in. Um, she started training, uh, I think a year after me. I could be wrong. Like, I think a, it was a while. I was training for a long, lot longer than her, but she picked everything up instantly. I still remember her first training session and she got everything down packed. So you knew right off the bat she was going to be an amazing wrestler. With her, it was great because we did become best friends. We got to train together. We ended up having our debuts together. The only issue is that when I was younger, I was stupid and let jealousy get the best of me and ruined a good friendship. But yeah, she's amazing. She, she, she really, she was immediately great after her first training session. I remember that like it was yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. She has, a, she, she's had that vibe about like, she's an Amazon, right? Like just very athletic. And you can tell from the second you set eyes on her. Like I remember the first time seeing it, be, thinking the same thing, but something that I feel like you've always had in your favor is the character. So like, but it, that's interesting. You touch on, on like uh, jealousy and stuff there. That's, that's, that sucks. Like that sucks. Yeah. yeah. But like I said, you uh, have your own thing that you're doing. I mean, you, you still you know working through uh, Riot City you've been going all over the place at the moment but uh, BCW in Melbourne Underworld Wrestling of course which we'll get to Schwa over in Perth you were the champion up in Hunter Valley for a while yeah yes I was yeah I only recently stopped being women's champion for Hunter Valley <laughs> but yes I was <laughs> yeah and, and so walk us through that like uh you know how does it feel like when a company is like you know they give you that tap on the shoulder like hey we, we want you to 
represent us at the highest level? Oh, it was amazing. Um, I've been in wrestling for years, and that was one thing I just never had. I was never a champion. And to find out that I was going to be Hunter Valley Women's Champion, it was like, oh, what? Like, it, like somebody was actually giving me a chance. And I've, I, I can't thank Hunter Valley enough for that. The former owner of it, I can't thank him enough for that because it was crazy. It was because I, I just wanted a belt. It was just like, I just want, uh, I, I was trying so hard for like, I want somebody to believe in me and for it to actually happen was amazing for me. Amazing. Right, like it's, a, it's a bit of, a yeah. bit of validation. Yeah. 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 For all the hard work you put in. And, and like, not only that, but you, you won the belt by defeating, you know, one of their biggest homegrown stars, Tar Lee. Yeah. That was crazy on my debut. I didn't think I would beat her. I, I didn't think I, yeah, she's won and she's been the Hunter Valley girl ever yeah. since I started. And to find out that I'm beating her on my debut, it's crazy. That's pretty surreal. Pretty surreal. Sorry, I've got a theory with her because I've never won a belt and then I've won two, but they were both in a match with Tali. So, <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, so I think it's Tali that's like my luck. <laughs> Tali's your lucky charm. So we're going to have to... We're gonna have to uh, kidnap Tali and bring her down to Adelaide. I'd be okay with that. I I trained with Tali, so I'm I'm friends with Tali. I love that girl. So <laughs> let's let's kidnap her and bring her down to Adelaide. So then you guys can work together and you can have have all that luck there. Uh, I feel like right. I feel like Adelaide wrestling. Sometimes I feel like uh, women's wrestling here in our city is a little bit of an afterthought. Yeah. Does like am I right in in thinking that like because I'm obviously I'm like on the fringes. I'm not. I'm not like behind the curtain or anything. I I'm very much on the fringes of things that happen, especially because of my social anxiety. I don't I'm I'm more involved in like uh promotions interstate than I am here because I just have that anxiety. Uh so but like, it does just from looking at it and just from being around it tangentially, it seems like uh women's wrestling doesn't really have the respect here that it has in the rest of the country. Can you speak on that at all? In Adelaide, I think our biggest issue is we don't have enough women. But in saying that, we should be we should be bringing women from other states down so we can at least utilize the women that we have. But the biggest issue with this state is the lack of women. We've only got a handful, so right. It, and then and then it gets into sort of like the competitiveness between companies because, like, I feel like so. For example, uh. You know, Wrestle Rampage, as far as I know, Joni May is the only woman working Wrestle Rampage at the moment. Um, and, and so who does she have to work, right? Like, it, it, it's one of those things where it'd be nice if, you know, even just for the women's rosters, like companies in Adelaide would be more, more open to sharing talent, which I mean, I, we're seeing bits and pieces of it. Like, uh, I think Casey Johns was just at, uh, Adelaide Championship Wrestling. So it's sort of starting to open up a little, I think, but, um, yeah, I, I feel like that's that's another hindrance to it is is just companies not willing to work together. And that's always been an issue of mine. Just um, I understand it works if it 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 has worked for years, but I do have a problem with it. I feel yeah. like why don't we all just work together? I feel like it's better to just go. Let's just build a good product for South Australian wrestling. Let's just all help each other out and let's just make wrestling in this state good. But every company just wants to be like, no, we're going to make our company good. <laughs> yeah. It's very protectionist, which like I understand, I understand that impulse at a certain point because you, especially for uh, the place as professional and as, uh, you know, world class, as, as we talked about at the beginning there with the training uh, with Riot City Wrestling, right? It's absolute world-class training. And so you don't want uh, to endanger your people by having them work with people who you, you don't know how they're being trained, right? So, like, I can understand that uh, to, to an extent, but at the same time, you know, you're all independent contractors and you should be able to take any damn booking you please, as far as I can see. 
a bit that's yeah. that's me on the outside like i that you said something there that's that's interesting to me like that's just and it's something that i have heard um oh, i'm gonna get heat here something i've heard off the record from people is that's just how it's always worked and i'm like yeah but it's not working for these girls is it because you know wrestling twice in a year in your own state sometimes like it's i don't know is that really working like it's how it's worked for years sure but it's not necessarily working for everyone and i'm i'm kind of of that mindset of just burn it all down and build something new like that's that's kind of i'm i'm an asshole that way (laughs) yeah you're right because it's like the thing is it's like yeah it works for the guys but for us women it just doesn't yeah it's like we've got all these other girl like we've got um there's three girls in acw yeah there's five in rcw i believe five yes there's five women in rcw um and then you've got Joni may yeah uh, but if you look at it it's like one company's only got three women one company's only got five women and one company's only got one woman yeah. so yeah it's like it works for the men because there are so many male wrestlers out there mm. and us it's like ah okay yeah, it kind of limits the opportunity because you're just working the same people over and over. Like, I know that over, like, it's Melbourne tend to be really good with people just work wherever they want, but PCW kind of have their own little bubble. And, yeah. and I know, like, Indy Hartwell was, it was basically like Indy Hartwell working Asia, uh, almost every match, <laughs> like, for, for however long until she, she sort of burst out and went the MCW route and all that sort of stuff. And then look at how much she's grown. Like, there's, there's proof cases there. For the fact that obviously, I mean, in certain cases, especially if you're not allowing intergender wrestling, like Adelaide Championship Wrestling do uh, intergender stuff, so their three girls get to work with everyone anyway. But uh, like, if you're if you're limited in that and you're not willing to do intergender stuff, it's 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 very like for the women because there are less of you. It's a very limiting experience, I imagine. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but, it is. But let's like, so like you've you've been booked more out of the state than in the state which is something that i i think it's a crime <laughs> personally because i like seeing <laughs> i like izzy Shaw. i like seeing izzy Shaw wrestle and somewhere that i've really liked seeing you wrestle underworld wrestling somewhere that i feel like um underworld have this uncanny ability to appreciate talent that are not necessarily being appreciated elsewhere is that does that, does that feel <laughs> like a, like a, a fair statement I kind of agree with that. I mean, yeah. look, like, look at the way they're pushing uh, Waterman, right? Like, and everyone, everyone's, everyone's saying, "Oh, Mitch Waterman, he's a he's a tag guy. He's a tag guy. He's a tag guy. He's in one of the best tag teams in the goddamn country, obviously." But uh, but then you, you give him a shot to run at the single stuff, and look how freaking good he's doing. Look how over that whole gimmick's gotten and stuff. And uh, and yeah, and there's a bunch of cases like that with underworld wrestling where it's just uh, people who you know Slade Mercer as well, right? Yeah, and just yeah, and they push him to the moon, and then everyone else starts looking like, oh, hey, it's Slade Mercer. We should we should push Slade Mercer. I feel like Underworld's kind of on the edge of finding talent that works, and you, of course, have gotten that tap on the shoulder once again in the match that involved Tali, and you're the Underworld Women's Champion. Yes, congratulations. Yes, I am. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so how how does it feel working for Underworld? How do you feel Underworld is different to other Australian wrestling? I love the concept of underworld i love that there's different rules and they're trying to make it stand out and have like a story behind the company with underworld i love i get to do the crazy girl gimmick yes i love it especially because i am a i am very cuckoo (laughs) i started i started um my wrestling journey when i was on shows as a stalker to brad smythe Right, yes. So I saw a stalker. So that creepy me, and I do love creepy stuff. It's funny because the amount of people in my life that have always been like, oh, you last love like these colorful colors and think that because I'm so nice and stuff <laughs> that I just love flowers and pretty things. And it's like, no, I like the color black. <laughs> I like, I like, I like watching movies about like, death and stuff like yeah you watch you, you're one of those people that binge watches all the netflix true crime stuff oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah so that's somebody that's that's what i am but because people just see like nice happy me they think i'm just like this little la 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 flowers 
<laughs> and pink and all this stuff and it's like no so well i mean you haven't like, you haven't helped yourself you haven't helped yourself with your entrance music choices have you um <laughs> that will be changed <laughs> all the all the bubblegum pop and stuff <laughs> that you kind of come out that to will be, all we're gonna say is that will be changed <laughs> okay all right fair fair yeah, yes <laughs> I, I like it though. I like the bubblegum pop. I'm not not dissing it. I just yeah, it's just interesting choices. But but you're saying you prefer uh the creepy stuff, the darker stuff. And so was it your idea to to change and to join the claw and or was it something that, you know, the the riders the, the people who run Underworld sort of pitched to you? Who came up with with, you know, dark Izzy or crazy Izzy? That would be Underworld. It wasn't me, but it's due to me being very close to i've been i i hung around with a lot of people in underworld so they've seen the crazy me that i can be they it was funny because the story i've gotten is that they were watching the ferals they saw me see the rabbit Mm -hmm. and somebody's went oh my god that's izzy (laughs) <laughs> and apparently that's what started it. And I'm like, I will take this. So apparently I'm Mixie the Rabbit from the Ferals. Nice. And I am pretty cool with this. <laughs> that's all right with you. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> and so and so they, they pitched it to you and you jumped at the opportunity because you were like, yes, dark, creepy, gimme, gimme. Yes. Yes. <laughs> My favorite thing are those gloves as well. Unfortunately, they fell off in the match, which made me sad. Yeah. <laughs> I remember before I went out, the gloves started to fall off, and I'm like, oh no, the gloves are going to fall off. And then someone went up to me and like pulled them tight and went, oh, well, you could still tighten them up. I'm like, yeah, but then you won't see like the lace effect. <laughs> I bought them for the lace effect. Right. So it just fell off. <laughs> it's the little things that, the, the little things that count. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, uh, but so, so Underworld Wrestling, now th- there was supposed to be a show this week, but it got, it got uh, moved due to you know issues with some of the contractors and stuff. We don't have a date as of yet for when the uh, the next tapings are. How how different is it doing tapings like they're doing a massive show and and bunching it into sort of like little TV tapings? I just try to te- I just try to um look at it like a normal wrestling show and not think of it as a taping. That there, there is that that sometimes it does pop into my mind. Don't mess up. You mess up, it's never gonna go away. But <laughs> I'm trying my best to just go. It's just a wrestling show, right? And see it that way. So I'm going to have my head in fact of it's a taping. It'll be there forever. Yeah. <laughs> so you're you're uh, looking at the people in the crowd, and you're you're focusing on what's happening here in the venue, and not thinking this is being watched by however many thousands of people on Amazon Prime. Yeah, no, that would freak me out. Yeah, I would do that. <laughs> so, so you don't have you don't feel that extra pressure. Well, now you will now <laughs> next time because I've put it in your head. But th- so there's no uh, extra pressure I'll going out there. Get about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so just get in the Zen space and just focus on what's happening. That's probably a good good plan to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, so Underworld Women's Champion, uh, the Claw. What's the deal with Mark Williamson looking to end the world? Like, is that he realizes that if he ends the world, there will be no more underworld, right? Um, Marky is a special, <laughs> special, special fellow, and I would bring Claw Izzy out, but then we won't be able to stop her because she's a bit kooky <laughs> and crazy. So we're just going to look her back in the head. Okay. But I'll talk for her. Um, with Mark, um, he's a special kind of human, and um. Who knows what goes in that crazy head of his, goes around in that crazy head of his. But Izzy thinks he's pretty cool. Izzy likes what he does. So she's just going to keep singing and skipping and going, la, 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 right behind him. Yeah, yeah. Right Even to, though the, he, to the he's doom of us end. all. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, and if people if people want to uh, to to witness this, where can they do this online? Where can they find you? Uh, where can they watch you next? Like, what shows do you have coming up? And where can people find you online? Um, online, you can 
find well of course i got matches on youtube you can find me on my izzy shaw professional wrestler page on facebook um i've also got izzy shaw 46 as my instagram i also have um isabel city with three x's on twitter um the next shows i've got coming up um I've got one in uh, Newcastle very soon, which hasn't been announced yet, so I'm not too sure if I should announce it on here. So <laughs> I believe they want to do that. Sure. I'm wrestling Mickey Fortune this Saturday for Riot City Wrestling, the new Riot City Women's Champion. Yes. So I'm hoping it's for the belt, but I don't know if it's for the belt. I'll have to see what happens there. I will be back at Schwa next month on the, I believe it's the 20th. Don't hold me to that. I believe it's the 20th, but Schwa for mid-year mayhem, I will be entering myself into the Rumble. Into the, oh, okay. Awesome. I will also be a part of WPW Uncensored the Friday before in Perth. Awesome. So people should keep an eye out for that. And of course they can find you on social media and they, they also people just well, while I've, while I've still got you here um the underworld wrestling incorrect quotes if you <laughs> want to see some funny izzy shaw action that's uh on twitter they 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 they've done some fun stuff with your dark izzy character i love this person i don't know who they are but <laughs> i love this person um i wish they would actually get me lollies if they're gonna spy on me but <laughs> um yeah i don't know if you've seen that but they keep they keep like spying on me and keep telling the world what I'm doing all of your with the and... stuff. Yeah, yeah. And all I'm asking for is for them to at least give me lollies if they're gonna spy on me, and they're not doing it. I'm I... still waiting for lollies. Just leave some in the letterbox, guys. Yeah, come yeah. on. <laughs> it's the least you what? can do. Stalker, I do not know who you are, but come on. If you're gonna, I need something out of this. <laughs> you don't just get to stalk me without like. Doing something to make up for it. That's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. All right. Thanks so much for stopping by the show, Izzy. That's okay. Thank you for talking to me. So there you have it. Izzy Shaw. Follow her on social media. She'll keep you updated on when the next Underworld Wrestling is coming. I'll keep you updated on when the next Underworld Wrestling is coming. I'm very excited about Underworld Wrestling Season 2. Season 1 is amazing. Get it on the Pivot Share. Get it on Amazon Prime. Uh, and uh, if, if you like that interview, and you like Aussie Grappler interviews in general, we are not the only people doing them. You can listen to our friends on the turnbuckle this week speaking with Robbie Eagles, fresh off his stint in New Japan for the best of the Super Juniors, where he finished with a good solid 10 points and is now going to challenge for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title right here in Australia, in Melbourne at Festival Hall on the 29th. Robbie Eagles chats with on the turnbuckle this week. Wrestle Radio Australia had a chat with Atlas Whitaker, the artist formerly known as Camby, of course, uh, talking about the gimmick change and what led to that and, you know, just taking the initiative and, and wanting to change the character is a fantastic listen, well worth well worth seeking out. Uh, over at Wide World of Wrestling, they gave their mid-year awards for MCW and, of course, the rest of the Wide World of Wrestling. And Triple M's Top Rope podcast, uh, that they had a special guest host this week, Jessica Troy, stopped by ahead, just one day ahead of uh, defeating Shazza McKenzie. I'm putting that out there in the universe. Uh, <laughs> Jessica Troy, of course, our guest last week on the show. I beat you to it, Rose. I had her last week. But, it, you know, it's it's good that you, you get to take the scraps of the interviews that I do and, and, and put them on, on your little, little mainstream platform there. I'm taking shots here. But I do love uh, Rose and Gail and the work they do over there at Triple M's Top Rope. It's actually becoming one of my weekly listens that I have to listen to every week. And they sat down and spoke with Jessica Troy. She was there for the whole show. It wasn't just an interview. Obviously, they talked about PWA. They talked about the PWA title match, but they also just talked about wrestling for the week uh, because Jessica Troy was filling in for Nashi. She was a great guest host. Well worth a listen. And uh, that's what we do. We support Aussie wrestling here. So this weekend, if you want to support Aussie wrestling and, of course, our friends over in New Zealand as well, if you want to support some local wrestling, here is where you can do it. In New Zealand, CPW Live Pro Wrestling takes place in Wellington. In my home state here of South Australia, we have two shows this Saturday, Riot City Wrestling Live at the Riot City Wrestling Academy and Rampage, Wrestle Rampage Live, their first dojo show taking place here in Adelaide. Up in Queensland, AWA Grindhouse Wrestlenado is in Fortitude Valley. 
UPW recoil on the Sunshine Coast on Friday night, and in Western Australia, EPW are going country with the charity bash in Bunbury. In Victoria, Adrenaline Pro Wrestling last exit takes place in Melbourne, and a big one in New South Wales this weekend as IWA Wild West Tour hits Lithgow and Dubbo on Friday and Saturday, respectively. Suplex Pro Wrestling on Saturday, Eyes on the Road in Goulburn, and PWA Black Label Friday night tonight at Max Watts in Sydney. We've got a preview show coming up that you can listen to with Big Boy Mikey. But that's what's happening this weekend near you. That's what it's all about, guys. Get out, support the boys and girls of Australian professional wrestling. Cheer the bad guys. No, that's not right. Cheer the good guys. Boo the bad guys. Buy a shirt. You know, support them with your money. Buy a swole bar from Big Fudge, you know, so he can pollute the ocean or whatever he wants to do now that he's the sanitation commissioner. Listen to the PWA preview cast that's coming up. I am at Greg Unchained on Twitter, at the Greg Unchained on Instagram. We collectively are the B Plus Wrestle on Twitter because wrestling wouldn't fit the B Plus Wrestling everywhere else. Like, share, subscribe, five-star review if you like what we do. And thank you so much for listening.